Good afternoon, evening, morning, night, whatever time it is. Uh, I'm Rob Wheatley. This is Robbo Land's vids. This is Robbo Land. Disgrace Lands, all of it, the whole thing. Um, hope you're all doing all right. Uh, this video is um, in response to a request from uh, CJ99W. CJ, nice one, mate. Thanks, as always, for the support and uh, the comments and for um, following the channel. Always really appreciate it. Much, yeah, fantastic stuff, mate. Um, he was asking me, um, or mentioning that, um, well, I put a link up in my last video. Those who haven't seen the last video I did, the Donald Trump one, there's a link in there to a, to a, a playlist of, of a lot of my unlisted videos, um, guitar tuition lesson summaries and things like that. Um, you go check the last video, the Donald Trump, Robbo for President, whatever it is, and you'll find it in there. But he was saying that um, one of the things I cover in those lessons, in, in those summaries, is uh, stuff regarding hammer-ons, hammer hammering on, pulling off. Um, and he was saying that often when he's hammering on, he hasn't quite got the technique exactly right and he tends to be muting strings um, and not not making them do what they should. Um, so here's a video on um, hammer-ons, really, and uh, how I see uh, probably the best way to get, get them to work and uh, ways of practicing them and uh, what you can do with them, where you can take them. Okay, um, now, Two, two things involved in hammer-ons, really. Well, three. First is the timing. First is the timing. Um, so you don't always have to hammer on the string as soon as you picked it. You can. I only mention that because normally when I'm teaching hammer-ons, one of the first things most students do is constantly hammer on almost immediately. To get around that, what I basically did was I had one of my students play a note and with his finger ready to hammer on and he wasn't allowed to hammer it until I said now and then, you know, play the note and he was now 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 anyone that's having problems getting their timing sorted out try that exercise with hammer-ons you do that for about five minutes it should sort your head out that's all it took with that particular student and we we cured that so I mention that because that seems to be a common common thing with uh, people first doing them the other thing I would say is I've been quite surprised um, because I think it was just something I ended up doing hammer-ons I don't think I've really sat down and, and, and someone someone told me it was just something that occurred naturally so um, I've realized that they're not actually that simple um, you need quite a bit of finger strength I think uh, you need accuracy on the strings um, and those are things which certainly for people who are just starting guitar those are things which take, take a bit of time to build up um, and obviously other exercises and other things you play will make that happen let's have a look at the mechanics of hammering on then and um, how to avoid the strings from muting what I think is happening is you're getting you're getting you're, you're sort of getting that. Yeah. And, the, and they're not really doing that yet. They're, yeah, you can hear it's just killing the string off. I think I know what's causing that, but we'll just go into another couple of little bits and pieces um, uh, how I would approach it. First of all, normally when you read any books on playing the guitar and it tells you about fretting fretting chords, what it normally says is you put your finger as close to the fret as you can behind it without actually being on top of it. That's the that's the ideal place to fret a string. So you wouldn't normally fret it, if I'm, if I'm playing on the third fret here, the one with the dot on, I wouldn't normally fret the string down this end of the fret. You know, I'd fret it there. Does that make sense? Yeah, as close as you can get to the fret without being on top of it. And that's what all the books and all those things always used to say was the best way of, of fretting the string. Um, I found from last night, from looking at how I was going about hammering on, I think, and this is my personal opinion, but like this seems to work, is that if you aim for the centre of the gap between the two frets, so again, you see where the dot is, exactly midway between these two frets, that's where I'll be aiming your finger. Um, the reason for that is if you're not entirely accurate you've got quite a bit of leeway yeah if you're trying to get it right on the fret here if you're, if you're then not accurate quite
before that, you'll be around by a millimetre, you'll be on top of the fret and it'll be buzzing. So that's where I'd suggest you want to aim for is roughly the centre, yeah, of the fret, of the of the gap between the frets. Yeah. That's number one. And number two um, is the part of the finger that you're going to use to hammer on with. Now what you don't want to be using is this fleshy part here. Now that can happen if your fingers are a little bit flat. Yeah, and then you're hammering on like that sort of thing, yeah. It sort of works. But then you've got a much more chance of killing the string behind it because your fingers are flat. I mean, in general, you'd want your fingers to be more that sort of shape. Um, and this is more the action. And we're going to hammer on right there. Yep, yeah, right there, right on the end. Bang, right on the end of our finger. So right at the end of your finger bone. Dave is over there. Can we have the tone banana, please? Thank you. This is my tone banana. <laughs> you imagine, that's the shape of your finger. And this is the action on the string. See that? See the part of the banana that's banging into the string? Because this is effectively what our fingers are doing. That hand. If you look, the shape of that finger, it's a banana, yeah? You can just get that. And it's the end of my finger that's hammering into the string, yeah? Remember the banana, remember the banana. Good. Um, fruit based guitar tuition, you can't beat it. Okay. So, the accuracy thing. Uh, hitting the string somewhere where it's not going to be rubbing on the fret and then killing the, killing the sound off, that's important. And as, and say, the part of the finger, the end of the finger, listen to that. If I tap that, that's what it sounds like. If I tap these two bits together, Swamp Ash, Mahogany, Swamp Ash, Mahogany, shut up Wiggly. Okay, so that's that. Um, what I think is actually causing the muting, what I think is causing the muting on your part, CJ, is I think that you're slowing down your finger before it hits the string. I think when you get to the string, you're saying, oh, I'm there now, and just resting it, you know, it's slowing down slightly. What you need to do is you need to be, I mean, that's, it would sound like that. Yeah, what we want is, yeah, not. Because if you think about it, the string's flapping around like this and you're bringing your finger down slowly and all it's doing is and you're just destroying it from, from vibrating by just dampening it slightly and then letting it come to a rest. What we want is we want to actually put so much pressure in it, we get it vibrating again, bang, and it's vibrating from here. Okay, so, there's me hammering on. Slowly, which is what I think you're doing. And if I mute the strings down here, listen. You can hear it. This is what I want, I do. Yeah, you're really belting into it. You ever seen some of the old Bruce Lee things where he's, he's describing how to punch someone in the face, all right? And you've got someone standing there and you want to punch them in the face, yeah? You don't aim at the front of their face. All right, because what happens is your fist goes towards them and as soon as you get towards their face, you're going to go, I'm almost there now, and subconsciously you're going to be pulling back because you're there. What actually happens in this last instant is you start slowing down, yeah? And by the time you get there, you're doing what you're doing on the hammer on. And you just basically go and stroke in their face. You want to punch someone in the face properly, aim for about a foot behind the back of their head, all right? <laughs> So I'm just sitting there like that. You want way behind here somewhere, so your hand is going right the way through and, and ending up somewhere here um, in the back wall. That way, by the time you get to my face, your hand subconsciously, you're not slowing down. You're just, bang, driving straight the way through it, yeah? All the way through, rather than, and that way you've still got all that momentum and all that speed and all that power and pressure, yeah? I think that's what's happening. Um, so, it actually hammers hammers with some force yeah imagine you're aiming for the back of the neck here somewhere rather than the top of the string yeah so your hand doesn't your finger doesn't slow down don't be afraid of the string it's confidence you see it's having the confidence um you're playing this note you're in control of it you've got to make it ring out and you've got to 
give it some energy to make it keep wobbling. Okay? And I think that is part of it. So, end of the finger, that sort of banana y banana on a pivot. Boom, boom, boom. So, this part is constantly the bit that's hitting the string. We don't want to hit the string with that because that's just not really. We don't want to be slowing down, we want to be aiming somewhere through here. So by the time we hit my finger, this thing's going at full pedal. Good old banana. Um, that, I think, should solve it. If you're having problems getting, your, getting that sort of angle, then just try moving your thumb. Take your thumb off the guitar. I mean, well, not that's it. But, you know, moving your thumb around might make a difference. Um, you know, bringing it further around this way, around the neck, or whatever, or just trying to arch your fingers up a little bit more might make the difference, but that's what we're going for. Mute the strings here, and you want to hear it. Not, you're not just pressing the strings down to stop them vibrating, you're banging a load more energy into them. Okay? Um, a lot of this is finger strength, and coordination, and accuracy. In fact, that's all of it. Finger strength, accuracy. No one expects a Spanish Inquisition. So, exercises for doing this, exercises for doing this, um, really couldn't be simpler. Play a note and try second fret, because or first fret doesn't matter. We'll just try first finger on the second second fret of the E string. So play the note. Parsons project. Um, okay, but literally repetition and practice. Because, and don't have your fingers all the way out here either. You want them close. You want to be able to get that energy. Because the closer you are, the more accurate you're going to be. Imagine throwing a, imagine you've got a, a bucket and you've got a paper ball and you're trying to throw it into the, or into a jam jar or something into a coffee cup, say, about that sort of size, and you're throwing a paper ball in there. It's quite easy from here. You're going to be pretty accurate, no matter where you move this around. You start putting the coffee cup over the other side of the room, and you, you're huzzing the ball, and you're getting less and less accurate, and the chances are, if, you're, if your finger's over here when you started, there's a good chance you're going to end up in the middle of the two strings. And that also could be a reason that you're muting the string, is it because you're not hitting the string dead on central, you're hitting it to the side and sort of killing it off, yeah? So the, the practices I would do, the, the, the practice I would do, and combine this, if you're, if you're practicing other things on the guitar, fantastic, but take a minute, two minutes, three minutes, whatever, just to... And try with two. Next finger up. Try with the next finger, third finger. Little finger, I don't tend to use so much for hammer-ons, partly because my fingers are so thin. They're long and stupid, but they're ridiculously thin, so there's not a lot of surface area. And so, and the strength, and often, but you know, sort of thing get all of the fingers going and then you can try your two fingered hammer-ons so open first finger first fret second finger second fret next string and try pull-offs as well the pull-off is the opposite of the hammer-on so you've got your finger on the string and then what you do is you sort of pull you, you don't lift your finger up vertically you pull it out to the side Usually that way, towards the floor, and it pings the string off, yeah? So, but those are the sort of exercises, repetition, practice, repetition. At the end of the day, you need to have complete control over this. Um, 
and it's something that is massively useful. Uh, I use it loads and loads and loads in my playing. I use tons of hammer-ons. Um, that started because my picking hand isn't that fast. Actually doing really fast sort of picks. I've smashed my hands up a number of times. It's surprised it still works at all, this one. Um, and so that's something which I had to overcome. And so obviously by doing hammer-ons, I don't have to be picking like crazy on this hand. Um, you can use them for rhythmic um, parts of parts of rhythm. So if I'm holding a G chord here, and it's the second finger on the A string, so instead of me strumming it, I can. finger running across the strings you can use hammer-ons for whole chords um. that's an E minor shape it's not there because I'm not playing anything but then I'm hammering on without it that sounds on this finger when you're playing power chords. Or a combination. So there I'm hammering on on the bottom, I'm hammering on the, the E minor shape. When I bring the chord up, I'm hammering on the bass note. That's obviously a little bit more advanced than whatever, but that's what you can do with hammer-ons as well as all your... If I could do it, these hands are a bit cold at the moment, but hopefully that's enough to get you going. But as I say, the key is practice. Keep doing it a couple of minutes every day, every single day. It's part of your normal guitar routine, even if you're not gonna play. Then three fingers. say that if you're having difficulty at first and it's really not happening slap a capo on it put it up maybe fifth fret seventh fret something like that because there your strings are going to be a lot closer to the fretboard once they've been capo so it's a lot less energy and that might be a way just to build up your finger strength initially but obviously next day move the capo down a bit next way Next day, move it down a bit. A couple of days later, throw it in the bin. Banana, capo, get out of here, right, you know? Anyway, let me know how that goes. See uh, if it helps at all. Um, if you're still having problems with it, get back to me and uh, we'll definitely get you there anyway, mate. Thank you very much for the, um, for, for, um, the question. Uh, more than happy to help. Take it easy, people. See you on the next one. Cheers.